We thank you, Brother Branham. Thank you. That's very nice. Thank God, you. God bless you, and thank you. and thank you. And you, you are so welcome. You know that. Yes. Always. <laughs> and uh, we hope to see you back next year. <laughs> thank you very much. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. Bless you, John. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Everybody happy to see Brother Branham say amen. amen. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> I certainly do appreciate that warm welcome by this committee here in the Chicago Convention. And Brother Sullivan this morning asked me if I would attend next year at um, Ohio up at his place where the next convention is to be held. And I told him, the Lord willing, I would be glad to do it. We'll just. Of course, we never know from day to day what will happen. Right. We're just, we should always say, if it be the will of the Lord. Right. But this has been a real blessing to me. As I was telling you, uh, recently at my cave, where I go to pray, I met the Holy Spirit. And I believe he's trying to adjust the phones. They got some transposition there. I guess that's what it is. And I know when I used to work for the public service company, we would uh, call transposition when we'd move the three phases of wire. We'd transposition it by moving it across from one one phase to the right hand phase to the left hand phase, and we call it a transposition. And I think that's what was happening there. The <laughs> transposition of the of the voice. But we are so glad to be here. And what Billy run up and told me just now, he said, they're taking your offering, Daddy. Thank him. <laughs> well, I, I thank you. <laughs> With all my heart. And I, I told Joseph not to do that. He, they do it, but it certainly can be used right now because I'm very much in need of it. As you know, I'm... I just recently borrowed five thousand dollars, and then before I got that out, I had to borrow another five thousand, and you know what I mean. <laughs> and uh, but I've yet got my first offering to take up. <laughs> but maybe if the Lord provides, and I have to get out on my own pretty soon again, I'm an agent of the Branham Tabernacle. You all might wonder how I live if I don't take no money. I get a salary from the tabernacle, which is supposed to be allotted to me for $100 a week. After the takeout comes, I get about $73 a week. That's what I live on. And so, but the otherwise, it goes into a foundation called the Branham Tabernacle and can only be spent, not for the tabernacle, but for the services out here. And that's the way I want it. I've never taken a salary till just recently, and sometimes I didn't even use as much as that. But now I'm on a salary from the tabernacle, which the, they think, as I got into the little trouble by not getting that number for my foundation, being a church, I didn't think I needed it, but they said I did. And so that's where the trouble come up. And I've sent now... And it, getting a number, and everything will be fine, and i just take a, a salary of about $73 a week when to take out the things that I have to be taken out for taxes and so forth, uh, a week. And all the rest of the money goes into the gospel work alone. I don't touch it, never none of it. The church just gives me a check, and that's how we live. We have big family and you know what? You don't live very expensive or very high on sick calls and everything else than seventy-three dollars a week. But in the services, I'm almost prone to. In my healing services, I've been noticing that if I just pray for the sick, it's so much better. And I'm a lot of the discernment it dropped on me last evening here. But I'm using most of that on these private interviews. I find it so much greater because I have the person by myself. And then Mr. Mercener, which is uh, the man who is the answering service at the 
the house, when people want to come, they, they just can't see the word, the way out, we sit before them and pray to the Lord. And when we get one case, we stay right on that case until it's positively solved. See, just keep it right on. And we never give it up. We make a list of it, put it away, and just keep back to that case coming on and on until the Lord brings them out. And I think that would be later, maybe, it I'd conduct all my services like that. And the prayer services and the meetings just bring the people to and pray for them. And uh, then if there's some hard case that they can't understand it and miss their healing, then put them on the private interview so I can get to them alone. That way, it's a little better than stopping, just going through a half a dozen here at night time or something. Most everyone through the nation knows me, and they know the ministry. Now when you get overseas, it'll be different than over there. We can continue on the, the way we did here. I'm intending, if the Lord willing, and I believe I have the assurance that the very best part of my ministry is right ahead of me. I, I believe that with all my heart. I, I've not no boy no more, you know, so I, I was, um, had a birthday recently, and April the 6th, and let's see, honey, I was a, I'm past 25, ain't I? <laughs> I was born in 1909, so anybody know I'd be just a little over 25. So. <laughs> and so, I'm not a boy, but you know, I think you have to get a little age on you to begin to realize what it's all about. At least I feel that way. I want to thank you, brethren, for your fine cooperation and your love and kindness and for this love offering, which will be taken straight to the trustees, be put right into the foundation, and it'll all be spent, every penny, to the kingdom of God for overseas missions and things that I, I know that'll go right. It'll have to go right. So I want it that way. I don't, wouldn't have it no other way. That's the way I want it. And now tomorrow, tomorrow morning is the full gospel businessman's breakfast at the uh, Edgewater Beach. Just that name makes me shiver. It's, it sounds like a lot of money, you know, and expense to get in there. And so... Uh, uh, we'll be over there, the Lord willing, in the morning at the breakfast. I pray that the Lord will bless us like he did this morning at the, the ministerial breakfast. And then tomorrow night, Brother Osborne's film is showing here in the city, and they've done an announced that. I'm going way away, several miles, way out around Hammond out there to a little church. Just to preach, no healing service, just to preach to a little 30-minute service or something and coming back. May to get a little rest, and then Sunday afternoon I aim to see the film myself. So if you're around here tomorrow night, go see Brother Osborne's film. It's always better to see it at night time because it's darker in the room and it shows a better picture. And then Sunday night, the Philadelphia Church is sponsoring a little farewell for Brother Joseph, which is going overseas, and that'll be held in the same building. I believe it's a school. Uh, Lake, Lake High Lakeview High School Auditorium, just a little ways down Clark Street here. Irving Park National. Irving Park and National <laughs> Avenue. All right, and that will be Sunday evening at 7:30. I'll be speaking and praying for the sick, the Lord willing. I just set back a few days before going overseas again to Australia and the different places where I know there lays a battle waiting for me. How they did Oral Roberts there, what they did to Billy Graham, and I know my time's are coming. But I want to put in my part of the gospel at the day of the judgment. See? My brothers went over and did their part. It's my duty to go do my part. Then if they turn it down, then God is a just God. He always shows mercy before judgment. I'm sure I can solicit the prayers of this group to be praying for me while I'm over there. Now, before we open his word or read it so that he can open it to us, let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, 
into thy presence we boldly come now, yet humbly, realizing that we have no standings at all, any merits that we could come this way boldly, but it's because that we have been asked to come boldly to the throne of grace. And we come in the name of him who bid us to come, the Lord Jesus. And we pray, God, that you will answer our prayer. And we have that blessed assurance that if our hearts condemn us not, that God will hear. And if there be anything in our lives that would be condemnation to us, then, Lord, first forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Because we know that he that told us to come said, If you from your heart do not forgive every man his trespasses, neither does your heavenly Father forgive you your trespasses. Therefore, when you pray, stand praying, forgive. Lord, if I have an enemy anywhere in this world, I pray, God, that you forgive the both of us, Knowing that we are man and human beings that striving to enter the kingdom. And I ask that you'll speak to us through thy word tonight and make it a living word to our hearts and minds. And Lord, we would pray for this convention closing out. We thank you for what it's meant to all of us. The seed that's been sown into our hearts, God may it grow and grow and grow. Bless these men, these fine brethren who have assembled for this gathering and these women, their wives and sisters and so forth, their children. Make us all more better Christians and more fit for thy service in this coming year. Answer prayer for my brethren, Lord, when they come to pray for the sick and for the needy. Hear them, O Lord. For Solomon said one day, if thy people be in trouble and turn towards this holy place and pray, then hear from heaven. Lord, I pray that when they turn their face towards heaven and pray, then hear, Lord. Answer their prayers. May their ministry grow this year, their churches increase in numbers and in power and favor before God. We pray tonight that you'll heal the sick that's in the midst of us. Save those who are here to be saved. Fill with the Holy Spirit those that are thirsting for righteousness. Speak through mortal lips and hear through the ears, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. It has been in the meetings where I've been holding all around nationwide and into Cuba and down into the islands. Every time an interpretation comes, it's always, if thou will believe my word, see, believe it all. Oh, that was the question Jesus asked, will I find faith when I return? He didn't say, will I find churches, will I find religion, but will I find faith? Not even he didn't question sincerity, but he questioned faith. 
Now, may the Lord who has spoken through the interpretation of the gifts of tongues, may he let his spirit just move in this building tonight and give everybody faith. I shall now read from the book of St. Luke, the first chapter, and begin at the 73rd verse for a text. And my subject tonight is all the days of our life. The oath which he swear unto our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear and holiness righteousness before him all the days of our life. I like that all the days of our life. When we receive Christ, it isn't just for a few hours or just for the time of the revival, but it's to last all the days of our life. I think each person coming to Christ ought to sit down first and think before you even go to the meeting. If God should call me, am I ready? If he should speak to my heart tonight, should I stand up? Am I ready to surrender all my life to him? That's the only way that he will accept you is when you give all your life. Man is prone to have his own way. Man wants to do things, and but he wants to do it in his own way. He showed that just a few hours after his fall in the Garden of Eden. He wanted to do it his way. Because man is always satisfied as long as he's doing it his own way. Did you ever notice when you're driving with somebody else? There's just all kinds of mistakes that they make. You push the floorboard out on the other side almost, trying to stop the car yourself. And in your mind you say, well, why did he do that? Or why did he turn this away? I would have did it so and so. See, that's just the nature of man. He wants his own way. And God did not make man to desire his own way. God made man to depend on him. To forsake his ways. To crucify his ways. He likened us unto sheep. And the sheep is one animal that cannot find his own way. He must be led. A little lamb can lose himself from the foe and he's just totally lost. He just stands there and blates. And that's the way it is with the human being. If he becomes a lamb, if his nature is changed, He depends wholly upon God and upon God's leading. But the earth man, when Adam realized that he had fallen from that estate where God had him, wholly depending on him, Adam quickly showed his second nature, his fallen nature. And he wanted a way back to be redeemed, but he wanted to do it his way. And after his own thinking, I trust that the church will understand this, that we have no right to use our own thinking about things. When we become Christians, we fully surrender every bit of our mental powers to God and follow after His leading. 
And as long as we try to go after our own feeling, then we are using the fallen state of the being. Because God led Adam before the fall, and after the fall, Adam wanted to lead God. Now, God provided Adam a way, but he didn't want that way. He wanted to make himself a religion. And as we see that he, he wanted to do it himself, he wasn't willing to wait on God and say, Lord, you led me before this and now I'm fallen, I'm lost. Now help me and show me how to get back to you, Lord. We'd have never had all this trouble we got today. And if man will just come that close to God, that when you're lost, don't try to find your way back. Just surrender to Him and He'll lead you back. Don't try to figure it out. That's, that's the mental powers. I said some time ago in a, a meeting or message, I said in the Garden of Eden, God and the devil chose their part of the man. The devil took his head. God took his heart. The devil tries to show him with his mental powers some great something he can do. And he only wants to see it with his eyes, what he can see. God come in his heart and makes him believe for things that he cannot see. For faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. He just believes it because God said it. He don't have to see nothing. Or no sense of his body has to declare it. He just believes it in his soul where God lives. But the devil took his head, makes him smart, figure yourself out of religion, a way of escape. God wants to lead him to the path of worship. And so Adam quickly sewed some fig leaves together and not waiting on God. I think that's where we've made the mistake all along. If that was wrong in the beginning, it's wrong now. And it will forever be wrong. God depended holy and complete surrender and to be led by His Spirit at the beginning, that's the way it'll have to be forever. God made the way. Asked Adam to come to it. But Adam didn't want to go that way. He wanted to hurry up and make his own way. So we can stay a long time on that. But notice, he made himself some fig leaves together for an apron. Well, it's still the same spirit, but they changed the name of leaves to creed. He's sewing some creeds together now. But it's still the same objective. It's still the intellectual thinking of man and not the plan and will of God. You can never be saved through creeds. You must come God's provided way. God made the way, but man wants to make his own way. However, the man is very religious. Cain was very religious. And he thought on the thought of coming back to God. And God was willing to receive him back, but Cain wanted to come his way. And God wanted him to come his way. And we find out that there was a conflict completely with them. Now, man today who try to say that they make their own creeds up and so forth, he's doing that by the power of his father Cain and his father Adam. 
Not as in the Christian who is born of the Spirit and depends on the Holy Spirit is after the second Adam, which was Jesus. The atonement that leads the man by the Holy Spirit. And when man today tried to say that they don't have to have the Holy Ghost today, then you can see what kind of a state that man's in. He wants to be religious, though. But he wants it in his own way. And he's so much like Cain. Cain wanted to be religious. So he went and made his own religion. And when he did, he brought it before God with something like this. Here's the best I got. This is all I can do about it. Now take it or leave it. That's about the way man does today. I help build the church. I send my children to church there. I put money in it every year. Now that's the best I can do. Take it or leave it. Oh, see, he wants his own way. That's the way Cain did. But God still loved him and he still went after him. What did God tell Cain? You'll do well if you'll just worship like your brother, Abel. Abel come God's way. But Cain wanted his way. And God said, now Cain, I've got nothing against you. If you'll just come over and go the way that Abel goes, you'll do well. But he hated Abel. He thought Abel was a holy roller. He hasn't changed his opinion. He thought Abel was a religious fanatic. And he still believes it, that his formal ideas and his culture of his own brain is better than the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But he's wrong, absolutely wrong. Don't care how well his choir can sing or how good his preacher can preach. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Back to God's plan. Back to the Bible. God has a way, but man don't want to come to it. Man said, now look, I'm as good as you are. I go to church. I pay my dues to the church. And he wants to be religious. And that's all right. But he's religious. But you see, the nature of the earthly man is religious. King was religious. Satan is religious. Religion isn't what saves you. It's the blood of Jesus Christ what saves you. And that's God's only grounds that he'll meet you on for worship. Others in vain. Now, we find out that man gets very religious. So he goes out, if he's religious like Cain does, and got the flowers and the fruits of the field, and he made himself a place to worship and build an altar, we find man doing that today. He'll go out, and he'll form himself a form of godliness. As the Scripture said he would do, have a form of godliness, but would deny the power thereof. Now, most of America is guilty of those things, Pentecostal and all, forming themselves a creed or a code of rules or something that they'll live by. And the Scripture forewarned us. And oh, he, there's something in him because if he is a fallen man, he's still a creature of God's handmaking. There's something in him that makes him worship. And if he wants his own way, he's following his intellectuals, and his intellectuals is of the devil. His heart belongs to God. Notice him. And now we find him out here. We just passed through a season recently called Lenten season. Oh, he wants to get real religious during Lenten season. For 46 days... He'll deny his cigarettes or something. And he'll, I'll, I'll go with him on self-denial. That's all right. 
But 46 days he'll deny himself of something. He'll grumble and fuss and hope that 40 days hurry and gets around that 46 days. He wants it to get over because he's sick and tired of doing it without a smoke or, he, or without a drink or without something or another that he sacrificed. It's Lenten. And he can't do it unless he plays a hypocrite to his church. He has to keep that Lent. And then on Monday after Easter Sunday, he goes hog wild after that. That's right. Why the nature in him? He'll buy him a box full of cartons of cigarettes. He'll long for that midnight hour to strike and jump up and grab a cigarette or get him a drink or something. And he'll really tear up for a few days. Why? He's really putting it on big. I go with him for the 46 days, but after 46 days he pulls away from me. I believe that Christian life is a continual sacrifice. He that will come after me, let him deny himself daily, every day, not 46 days, but every day. Take up his cross and follow me, said Jesus. Not just 46, but every day. Christian life is one continually limp. Oh, how the Christian loves to do it. He doesn't do it with a, a grudge. He does it with the feeling that he loves God and he's glad he can do it. It's a joy to serve the Lord Jesus. It's a joy to sacrifice. Amen. It's a joy Amen. to worship the Lord. Yes. It's a joy to be called a fanatic for the kingdom of God's sake. Yes. It's a joy to take a stand for the right and move from the wrong. Yes. It's a joy to praise Him. It's a joy to abstain from the things of the world. It's in their heart. It's a perfect Lent. Lenten all the time. God's Spirit comes into you and changes your desire. Now, we hear so much today about we are free. Oh, we live in a beautiful America. We are free. All the air is full of it. Books are wrote of it, thousands of them. But you are a million miles from being free. You're not free. Don't you be deceived by that. Right. America is one of the greatest deceived nations and in more bondage than any place I know of. Yeah. They're worse than bondage and communism could put them in. Communism can only hurt the body. They can only put the body in bondage. But when the devil comes in, he puts the soul in bondage. And man is a slave. America is a bunch of slaves. You may be a slave to pride. You might walk up and down the streets and go through every store and every passion that you can see on television and go from store to store trying to buy something. You become a slave to it. You become a slave to your dressing. You can become a slave to your money. That the only thing that you think of is to make money, grab and put it up here. If you do that, you're a slave. You may be a slave to your religion. You may be a slave to a bunch of creeds. And let me tell you, a creed is nothing but framework for communism. It's the scaffold work that the devil can use to build communism is a cold, formal church. For men and women will go to that church and become a slave to their religion, become a slave to the devil, going into the church and putting their name on the book and paying money into it. Or either they go there and there's never nothing said about wrong. 
I don't like to say this, but I'm going to say it anyhow. I, I'm not speaking too hard. Now I hope I'm not. I want to say it with season in it. But sisters will go to the out here and on these streets here in Chicago, it's disgracefully to see them how they take their clothes off and walk on the street. And they seemingly don't know any different. They don't realize that they're committing adultery. You say, well, Brother Branham, I know women, that a woman cannot wear shorts without having an evil spirit on her. You get that. Because she might not believe it in her intellectuals, but Satan has put that spirit on her to show herself before man, and at the day of judgment, every man that looks at her in a wrong way will be guilty with her for committing adultery with her on the day of the judgment. And her pastor don't say nothing about it. They say, I'm hard. I'm not hard. It's not hard. That's truth. You know why? She's blind and he is too. And the Bible says if the blind meet the blind, both of them will fall into the ditch. It's intellectual. And man also will go out and do things, cheat in business deals, and still even be deacons in the church, smoke. When 133,000 Americans will die this year from smoking cigarettes, 133,000 is marked up for death this year for smoking cigarettes. The medical science said in the last Reader's Digest, that if a man smokes in these days, it's so advanced that he'll never live his time out. Something don't kill him, or he'll die with cancer before his time's out. That's right before his eyes. And yet he'll go on. I shook hands with a pastor the other day that his fingers were yellow from smoking cigarettes. If you defile this body, I will destroy it, saith the Lord. The Holy Spirit speaking in the scriptures tonight said that we might serve him all the days of our life in holiness before him. That's cleansiness. Holiness. But today you can mention the word holy and people laugh at it. See how Satan's got it all wrapped up? But you are a slave. And if you are a Christian, you're a slave. You're a bond slave of the Lord Jesus. If there's two people of you, both spirit and body, and if you cater to the flesh, you're a slave of the devil and you'll crucify the soul that's in you. For the Bible said the soul that sinneth, that soul shall die. And you have to crucify the flesh in order to be a bond slave in your flesh to be a servant of Jesus Christ. So you're a slave any way you take it. And you, you can't get away from it. So you're a slave, you're marked. And the Bible said in the last days there would be two marks. And every person on the earth would have one or the other. You just can't get out of it. One's the mark of the beast. Right. The other was the seal of God. Yeah. And the seal of God is the Holy Spirit. God's provided way for His church. Amen. Ephesians 4.30 said, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed until the day of your redemption. And to reject that Holy Spirit is to take on the mark of the beast. All that didn't have the mark of God had the mark of the devil. So you're marked. You're either marked a bond slave in the love of God, or you're marked a slave to the things of the world of the devil. That's hard. But we are slaves, and we want to serve him all the days of our life. A slave is a servant. 
In order to be a servant of Jesus Christ, you have to be a slave to yourself. Amen. To crucify. Amen. Oh, God, let it sink in. Crucify yourself and your flesh and your desires that God might take hold in your heart to move you and motivate you. That's the slave of Christ, the bond slave, called Paul called it. He said he was a slave to the Lord Jesus. A bond slave in service for the Lord Jesus. Going about daily crucifying the flesh to be a slave for Jesus Christ. Rejoicing because he was a slave. That's it. We try to stand by the church. The church, the church, that's all you hear. The church. There's only one church. And that church you don't join, it has no creed. You're born into that church by the Holy Spirit. Your birth brings you into that church, into the fellowship of that church. So, in this we become slaves to Christ. Now, you've heard the old legend of the devil calling all of his imps together to have a council down in hell one morning. And he said, what can we do? I want the smartest, the most brilliant of my imps to come around my throne. He said, how can we deceive that bunch of human beings? And one little smart black imp stepped up and he said, Master, I have the idea all drawn out. He said, then what is it? And he said, we'll go up there and cause a cyclone to destroy every one of the churches. That's how we'll deceive them. And another imp, which was much more smarter than he was, stepped up and said, how foolish can you speak? That's the only place we've got him to see that, is at the church. And that was so at the beginning, and it's so now. Because he was deceived by trying to sow fig leaves together to make himself away and reject God's way. And that's what he's still doing. Sowing his creeds together and making this and that in big churches and places to try to deceive man by him. The Bible said he would do it. Have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof. So you see, it's, you've got to be a slave one way or the other. But we who are bond slaves to Jesus Christ, we are slaves of joy. Yes. I'm so glad that I got shackles on me that shackled me away from the things of the world that I could become a slave to Jesus Christ to serve Him in love. Yes. And you, my brethren and sisters, who are like precious faith, who's been born of the Holy Ghost, that's had the blood of Jesus Christ to sanctify and cleanse you from all the filth of the world, that died daily to the flesh, crucified, putting it away, and becoming a slave to your own body to serve God. We look for a city to come. Blessed be the Lord. We are looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. When this old robe of flesh will drop and rise and seize the everlasting prize and shout while passing through the air, farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. That's what we look for. We look for the day that when we'll be delivered from this old body of corruption. And it'll not be slavery anymore, but we'll be in the arms of Him and in the care of Him and in the image of Him who loved us and gave His life for us that He might wash us by the water through the Word to make us presentable in the presence of God. His presence goes with us. The angels of God are encamped about those who fear Him. And we know that He's here tonight. And if we, all the days of our life, we serve Him in holiness, but we're slaves to Him. If you haven't become a slave to God yet, to Christ, a bond slave in His love, let us bow our heads and you think it over just a minute. 
Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in this life-giving flow. Oh, there's wonderful power in the blood. Won't you, human being, won't you, people that's present here tonight, cut loose of the fetters of Satan. He just wants to keep you bound far enough that he can, he can hold you. When the children of Israel was going out of Egypt, Pharaoh said, yes, you can go worship, but you leave your children behind. Leave your cattle behind. What do you want to do? Leave something back there so they know that they come back for it. That's what Pharaoh, the devil, still saying to the children. But I like Moses' statement. He said, we won't leave one hoof behind. We'll go everything that we've got to go. That's the way. Let your pride go. Let everything that you've got go. Take everything with you. Don't leave nothing back in the world. Surrender all to Christ while we pray. While we're praying, would anybody like to be remembered in prayer? Raise up your hand. Say, remember me, God. Oh, that's good. God bless you. I want to be marked by God. I want to be his bond servant. I want to be so in love with Jesus that all the things of desirable in my life of this world will be crucified. And I'll be more like Jesus each day. I'll be so much like him that others will see Jesus in me. That's where I want my life hid. Is the others who would raise your hands that hasn't? God bless you all around. Up the balcony, that's good. God bless you. Let's bow our heads humbly now and pray. Whatever you have need of, just ask. Ask abundantly that your joys may be full. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock, it will be opened unto you. O oh Lord, we just have to cut a little bit short tonight in the message because healing services are coming up. But first, we want a healing service, Lord, of the soul. We want to see men and women be healed by the power of God that will take the world and the desire of the world out of their life. Satan is trying to pull many of the children back today. Oh, there's so much enticement, so many uncensored programs on the shows and televisions and, and things that they should not look at. And it entices the human being. And we think of the churches, how they let them blindly stagger into that thinking that it's all right. We hear the solemn warning, if the blind lead the blind, they'll all fall in the ditch. We pray tonight, God, that such a desire will come upon each heart that raised their hands and those who did not raise their hands. That the desire will be so great in their life tonight until every line that's holding them to the world will be cut loose. Their souls will flow freely. God will take control and lead them and they'll not try to think for themselves. They'll just believe what God says and be free. Forgive them of sin. Forgive them of sin of transgressions and omission, whatever the sins might be, Lord. We pray that you forgive them. It may be they're just dilatory. I pray, Lord, that you'll forgive them for that. For you want men and women to leave this convention as we would express it, on their toes for you. Ready to go serve. We don't know what day the last opportunity will be presented to us to serve. Our lives will be called. Then we'll answer before God. If there has any escape, Lord, from the further services or the services that has been, grant that this will be the hour that they'll surrender all. May this message cut deep. 
May it be brought out in the way in the heart that you would have it, that they would see that it, I am trying to present to them, Lord, that the natural man sees the natural things. And there, the spiritual things are so contrary to the intellectual that he cannot understand it. And it was you, Lord, that told Nicodemus, except the man be born again, he can't even understand the kingdom of God. So we pray that new birth will be in this building all over it tonight, Lord. That new hearts, new generations, new new impulsions, new gifts, new hopes, new life will just be sprung up all over this place in every heart. I present it to you now, Lord, as your servant. In the name of Jesus Christ, may I meet them at the judgment, if not before, and say it was in Chicago on that Friday night that I said my yes and I cut loose every shoreline to launch out into the deep to let down for the drop. Grant it, Father, we love to be your slaves all the days of our life. We serve you as bond slaves of your love with joy. In Jesus' name, amen. That's that, that little song, I am coming, Lord, coming now to thee. You know what, son? Give us a little song. Room at the fountain. Do you know that one? Room at the fountain? Jesus speaking near the cross? All right. Let's sing that good old song. I, you can have what you wish. I, I, the Jubilees are all right. But I like them good old heartfelt songs. About the blood and about the cross. Somebody help me lead this down. Jesus Now is your time to worship now. Why do you worship over the Word? You water it now. Worship over the Word that's went into your heart. Oh, it's free. Sing it again. intellectuals of the world has been taken away. The Spirit's just worshiping. Worshiping God through us. The Holy Spirit making intercessions. Breathing out worships. Oh my. I I'll take that before any creed there is. We don't have no law but love. No creed but Christ. No book but the Bible. 
That's it. That's it. Just give me that forever. That's good enough for me. Oh, how we love him. All it feel real good now. Just real cleaned out. Raise up your hand. Oh, isn't that fine? Just look. Oh. So sweet. This is so sweet to trust me. Y'all know this song helped me sing it. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Now, we're not saying it so somebody hears you here. We're saying it so he hears us, the Spirit. We're trying to find favor with you now and worship him and him come to us. All right, let's sing. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just glad I learned to trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. I've seen man dying as a shadow of cancer, see him raise him up to life again. I've seen little children lay on the road, a little child that was completely dead, nothing, every bone in him broke, laying on the side of the road in a vision two years before it happened, laying his little hands across, walked away and all of them standing around walk up there and how his word told me that child would rise again. Oh, my. How I proved him over and over. This speaker said, Lord Jesus, you was the one said that he would rise again so death you can't hold him no longer. Come to him. Life. The little fellow jump on his feet and start running and jumping off on him. How I proved him over and over. I've seen those staggering in blindness and darkness receive their sight and walk away. <laughs> How I've proved him over and over. I've seen the prostitute on the street come to me and say, Brother Branham, I'm not worthy to stand in the minister's presence, but I don't want to die like this and see him be made lame. Lame. Just as renowned ever sin forgiven. I've seen drunkards stagger in, so whiskey soaked in tobacco all over him and saying, I've tuck the cure I've done everything and I just there's no hope for me and see the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse them from all of right and a year later see him standing in the pulpit preaching the gospel how I proved him o'er and o'er Jesus Jesus precious Jesus all for grace to trust him Lord I'm going to trust him for your healing now I want you to trust him too I'm going to trust him that after our sins are under the blood and our hearts condemn us not that when we lay hands on the sick, they'll get well. Lord, in my other Bible. When the Lord gave me a vision and said, the change will be when a woman will come to the platform, how she'd be dressed and would have a little baby that was uncurable, wrapped in a little blanket, and the baby would be healed. She'd be wearing the coat suit and how she'd look and all like that. And that would be the time that my ministry would change. How many of you ever heard me say that? Of course, for years. How many knows when it happened? Right down here in the armory when I was here the last time. Walking across the floor, my wife, my daughter-in-law, and even Billy. And they were all there, and I seen this little woman coming. I had a prayer line moving. And this little lady come, and I thought, well, I, I don't believe I is somewhere. I've known that woman, but I just can't place her. See, it had been so long, five or six years. Though it lingered, Yet it will speak in its day. I see, is the five over there, Billy? Billy? Is the five there? One to five? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right? And so I looked around to find Billy. He wasn't on the platform. I looked for my wife and her and Lois, my daughter-in-law, they were looking some other way. And I've seen what it was. It was a little woman. She had the baby and she brought the baby up, prayed, and the Lord Jesus healed her, made her well, made the baby well. And Rosella, where are you at? She was here to witness about the little baby. And um, so here's how the story started. I went down to pray for the, for the children that had been uh, hurt in this uh, Catholic school that burned. You remember the case? And remember the full gospel businessman had a, a meeting there to offer prayer for the sick and the sisters and them was in the hospitals. And this little lady had went to her pastor. Rosella, my wife, was at the Swedish Covenant Church or something she belonged to. And the doctors here in the city, many of them, had given the little baby up. They couldn't live. And her pastor said, go see Brother Brandon. God will hear his prayer. Now, if that man's present, God bless you, brother. For that, because you did something for that lady. And so, the, if I'm telling the story right, you follow me. And um, so, the, that night, when, uh, the afternoon, I just made a congregational prayer for the little sick fellows in the hospital and the sisters that was hurt. And I left. And the little lady was crying because she had to go home. The father was babysitting with one or two more children. And so the, uh, I believe Rosella seen her crying or something. And they said, well, what up, Brother Branham? She said, I brought the baby. The, my pastor told me, come have Brother Branham pray for it. And said, the doctors has given up. Said, but uh, he never prayed for the sick. And she said, that'll be tonight. That was for the school today. And so she said, but I can't stay. And I believe one of the ushers helped the baby or something. Well, she went and made a call to her husband. Her husband sweetly said, go ahead, honey, stay. So, Rose Ellis and I tell you, usually Brother Branham's son, Billy Paul, gives out the cards. Said, you stand there at the door, and he'll tell you where to go, and said, you tell him you want a card. So, uh, Rosella helped her, and Billy gave her a card, and that night, I don't think she's in the discernment line, she's just coming down along the line. But however, I, when she come in, I seen the little baby, and I thought, wait a minute, dressed like that? I know that baby? Brother Gene Gold sitting here up in New Hampshire last spring. There's a lady come on the platform packing a baby. Now, he said, Brother Brandon, wasn't that that lady? I said, no, that wasn't her. We've been looking for about four or five years for her. And I said, that wasn't her. I said, because this woman was, uh, had, was blonde-headed and she was tall and dressed different. The baby was older. This is a little bitty baby, real, real sick. And so when the lady come up, the Holy Spirit began to move and said, that uh, the doctors that give the baby up begin to tell all the history of the baby, as he usually does, and told her that uh, her little baby couldn't eat anything. Every time it would eat, I believe, is that right? It would throw it up. And it is so many months old and only weighed just two or three pounds or something. And um, if it did stay in the stomach, it went right through it as a dysentery. And they, it was in a terrible shape. But the Holy Spirit spoke out, Thus saith the Lord, the baby sealed. And I looked to see where Billy was. I couldn't seem to make him understand. So I said, I'll just wait and see how blind they are, if they're as blind as I was. So went on. And after we started home that night, got in the car, my sister, my daughter-in-law said, did you notice that sweet little baby on the platform? She said, it was the cutest little thing and so sick. Wife said, I noticed that baby. And I thought, now we'll name it. Well, I let it go on. They never named it. Next day, we was going home, and I couldn't get out of Chicago till noon. My car froze up, and I had to get it thawed out. And it was about noon before I got to leave. And going down the road, the wife said, uh, Billy, did you notice that little baby last night? Wasn't that the sweetest little thing? I said, yes, it was. <laughs> Just went on. And she's passing by it again. I said, honey, did you notice anything special about that baby and mother? I said, no, I don't think so. I said, you remember about five years ago, a little woman to be dressed with a coat suit on? She said, that was it. I said, just exactly, that was it. And my daughter-in-law and son, later we caught up with them and went in to have our, uh, our night supper, we call it. And so we went in to have her supper. And uh, 
And Lois named about the baby again, and I mentioned to her, and Billy said, That was right, Daddy, that was that baby, wasn't it? Yes. And from that, the things changed. Everybody, I can bring here, all of them up for eight one. That doesn't matter. And every once, sometime along the line, the Holy Spirit will stop me and say, Talk to this one. And then usually, if I had the sermon on one, I couldn't have no more. Every time I met a person, it'd be the same thing. But now it isn't. I can have maybe go along if something has to be. I see somebody looks like they're going to need it. The Holy Spirit will sometimes talk, stop, speak to them. Then maybe it'll leave me completely and maybe it'll go way on down somewhere else. Maybe somebody else maybe discourages something. It'll stop, tell them. Then completely leave me and I rest up between those times, you see. So I can make an altar go, oh, it's, it's way bit different than it used to be. That way I can pray for every one of them, every person. And my meeting has been revolutionized because the thing that people here thought, there's not enough gets prayed for. Well, I couldn't help it. When I'd have a discernment for one, he'd bounce right to another, and then I just couldn't come away from it. But now it does. It just leaves me and goes on. You see, God takes a notion to say something. Oh, that's much better. I wanted to explain it here because I think this is my first time to be to pray for the sick in the Philadelphia church since then. So we're thankful. Every vision God has given has come completely exactly what he said never fail one time. I stake my life upon that because it's a word of the living God made alive among us. That is true. I'm 50 years old. I have known that a vision since I was about two or three years old, first vision, that told me where I would live. And I say this as a Christian, I have never in all my life ever seen sincerely ask God for anything but what he gave it to me or told me why he couldn't do it. And I believe that every Christian in here can vouch for the same thing. If you'll be sincere and come to God. Now, there's many times you think you have need for something. God never said that he would supply your wants. He'd supply your needs. See, he knows what it is. Now, the Lord bless you. Now, how many we got there now? Look, Billy, where are you at? Ten, ten to fifteen. Number ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. All right, that's good. Now, I believe when that group is out there at twenty, let's let them stand. Now, right here's where I want twenty to start from, right here. Are you twenty, sister? Stand right where you are. Uh, yeah, well, look, they're, they're lined up against the wall, Billy. Then I can line them up right here. I think and run them through. Think you can stand down through there? Okay. Have it your way. 21, 22, up to 30. Go right around the wall. Huh? From 20 to 30. Right around the wall. All right. That's 10 more. Right around the wall. 30 to to 40. Let them come next. 30 to 40. Billy, I believe you're making a mistake. I never like telling anybody how to run their business, but you're going to have more than you can put in the line over there. I'll tell you what, just let the ladies stand right here. You, the sisters there, come right out here. All right, I'll have to wait till they get those lined up. All right, while they're lining those up, let's sing Only Believe. What do you say? Everybody together now. Only Believe. Let's sing while we're singing. I see you coming down off the mountain. Oh. sing it different. Now I receive. Let's sing it like that. You like it like that? Now I receive. Receive Christ. Now
over here. great Chicago preacher, Paul Rader. He's in glory tonight. Went like a gallant hero. Before he died, when he was dying, they tell me that in the hospital he called for his brother Luke, and he said, Luke, we've come a long ways together, but think of it, in five minutes from now I'll be standing in the presence of Jesus Christ, clothed in his right. Oh my. He was a wonderful man. God bless Paul. Now, is those anxious to be prayed over. Right. Now, I want to say this to my, my friends that's here. There has been times that you've wrote me for a handkerchief or anointed cloth that I prayed over. And you failed to receive it or maybe waited a long time before you got it. I used to think what a smart man Or Roberts was. And he is a smart man. And a wonderful man of God. And I used to think, how brilliant that man can be to have an office of about 400. And all these things and the editing of paper. I said, I don't understand how he does it. And Brother Tommy Osborne and I, we just kind of slummed along. And after a while, up went Brother Tommy Osborne, almost with Brother Roberts. Just about his greater office and things as Brother Oral's got now. I said, say, how does that happen? I didn't understand. I come to find out that it wasn't them that did it all. They had somebody around them to do it for them. <laughs> so that, that, that lightened the burden. So we are trying that. We are trying to, to get enough around us that where we can answer these clauses, these prayer clauses and letters just as fast as they come. They come in one day, go out the next. And I've changed offices. I don't have the same office. The same post office, Box 325. But I got a new office for us all together. Holy Ghost filled people. That's ready to answer and to work with the mail. And pretty soon the Lord willing we're going to stretch out, out into more. And uh, so we can keep ministering farther. And so, uh, but we're seeing that every prayer cloth is put in. I pray over it. Every prayer request is called in. It's immediately given to me. And we got it just on the dot. So if you need prayer, urgent prayer, and you want me to pray for you, my staff to pray for you, not only the staff, but they bring it to me. Maybe if I'm not at the answering service out on calls, it's put right down reverently and given to me immediately as soon as they can get to me. And I go right straight to prayer for them. And sometimes they bring in sheets of it. I take that and go to my... Uh, go into my basement, maybe. I've got a, like a den room there. And I take one with my finger like this and start praying. So I feel the Holy Spirit there and I say, God, here's Sister Sam Jones. She says here it's got cancer. Oh, God, she's dying. Please, in Jesus' name, hear my prayer. Here's Brother so-and-so. He's got a tumor. He's in a hospital. God, please be merciful to him and spare his life. Each one right down the road. As Brother Mercer types them off and sends them to Brother Gold right straight to me, I get right to them, off to myself. See, I'd like to go out and just be associating with the people and meeting them and talking and shaking hands. I can't do that and minister like this. See, I got to stay where the anointing of the Spirit is all the time. When the battle's over, then I want to point up with you each one a thousand years of peace to set down by the rivers of the waters of life. And there, talk it all over. But right now, we've got to minister. The, the heat's on. The day is hot. And let's minister and fight the fight of faith and stay in the battle there for the people. Yes. See, that's what we've got to do. And every prayer cloth that you send is sent to you is absolutely ministered to. 
every person that calls in for prayer is absolutely one by one ministered to. I know you like to hear that. It wasn't that way before. We just, oh, we just had to do the best we could, but it's all being organized now, and we're thankful. Now, while they have got the prayer line waiting, we're going to pray for these calls, and you help me. I remember, you people who's right with God, God will answer your prayer just the same as He'll answer my prayer or anybody's prayer. He'll answer His children. He has no specials. Now, he might give one a certain work to do and someone a hoe and someone a hammer and someone make a carpenter, someone, but they're all his children. So let's pray. Lord, we as this portion of the body of Christ, we are coming to thee sincerely for these sick people that these handkerchiefs and little packages and bottles of oil and so forth in here represent. And now let the Holy Spirit that's present, the Spirit of the Word of God that made the promise, may it sanctify these efforts that we're putting forth, that when these claws are laid upon the people, or the anointing oil dropped upon the sick, may immediately the angels of God stand near to minister to them the blessings of the covenant that Jesus Christ made with the sick. Grant it, Lord, for we ask it for his glory and in his name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You be seated. And immediately after the service now, you can get them. I believe that it's uh, all the 50s in the line. All right. How many? Now, no one. Is there any more prayer cards in here? All right. Then just... Do who have not a prayer card, raise up your hand. Who was it? Somebody with a prayer card? Oh, brother here, just drop yourself right in there anywhere, brother. <laughs> All right. Now, without prayer cards, you said, raise up your hands. And you're sick and you want God to heal you. I remember. I got a little sermon I preached. He's God on the housetop. He's God in the cellar. <laughs> He's God in the prison. He's God in the hospital. He's God in the church. He's God in the pew. He's God everywhere. He's God. And that's right. He is God. He's just as much God there where you are as he is God here or God in heaven. He's everywhere omnipresent. Do you believe that? Omnipresent. <laughs> Omnipotent. Infinite. He's God. Now, you know there's a little woman in the Bible that couldn't have a prayer card or get the prayer line. But she touched the border of his garment. You remember that? That's all the prayer cards she needed. If she'd have had a prayer card without that kind of a faith, she'd have never got healed. But she had the faith without the prayer card, and that's all that's necessary. That's all you have to have. Have the faith without a prayer card, and you can be healed. Do you believe that? Just let you know that God is still God. He'll answer you out there. I, I miss the hands over here. Everybody over here, put up your hands. It has a prayer card. All around now. I guess it's just everywhere. Everybody, this is a sick world, isn't it? But you know what's the sickest body on earth? I say this with reverence. Not to be sacrilegious. God forgive me if I say wrong. The body of Jesus Christ. It needs healing. And it can only be healed by brotherly love. That's the sickest body I know of all broke to pieces and tore up. God, I pray for the healing of that body. And you're the members of that body. So God heal you physically and spiritually. Make you what you should be. Now you touch his garment tonight. And he'll be God out there just as he's God here. Now, I suppose that everyone in the prayer line, I want to talk to you because this is not a line of discernment. This is a line of prayer. Now, the reason I comb through the people so closely at that discernment, anyone knows that knows the scripture that sometimes sickness is permitted by God to bring discipline to his people. You know that? That's right. Well, what if you take a gift and take off the person what God put on them? Then you're in trouble with God. 
Is that right? You believe the power that God gives unto man in prayer can do that? Whether it's the will of God or not, it'll do it anyhow. Moses smoked the rock and it wasn't God's will. I couldn't imagine being God's will for called Elijah was bald headed and those children making fun of him being bald headed and he cursed those children and caused the death of forty two little children. I can't think that to be the Holy Spirit. See, but it's just the prophet anger and the power of that prophet. Now, so all of you along the prayer line, remember this. If you've got unconfessed sin in your life, I'm going to pray with all my heart. And if there's anything in my life to keep prayer from being answered, I don't know it. Now, I am not a healer, but I have had some certainly direct answers to prayer. And that's what I'm coming to pray for you, not to heal you, to pray for you. You have to have the faith for healing yourself, as same as I do to pray for you. But the Bible said, These signs shall follow them that believe that lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Now remember, I'm placing this right back in your lap. If you have unconfessed sin in your life, step out of the line now, make it right with God. For remember, I'm not responsible. God judge you. If you come through the line with unconfessed sin and are healed, and it's against the will of God, then you see to it, it's not on my hands. For the Lord would not let me do this for a long time, but now He's given me permission, so I place it back on you. Many of you remember in the meetings how that the Holy Spirit would call out them sins and things of man living in adultery and women and things that they had stole. You remember, don't you, church, all of you? See? Now, we're not taking that now, so I'm placing it right back on you. See, You see to it. You come on. If you if you're, don't feel right about it, pray and ask God. If he says, all right, you come on through. The Lord bless you. Until we meet again Sunday night, the meeting. God be with you. Now, start here with the people here. I suppose every one of you in the line is a stranger. We're strangers. How many in the line knows I don't know nothing about you, don't know what's wrong with you or something? Raise up your hand. All you people I'm strangers to. How many out there in the audience is sick and knows that I don't know nothing about you? God, raise up your hand. But God does know that, doesn't he? If he will permit, let God's will be done. Now to start with, so that you'll see that the Holy Spirit is still here. The Holy Spirit gives discernment. He's still here. This lady here. Will you start with her? Now, sister, whether I, whether the Holy Spirit would anoint me to tell you about yourself or something, that wouldn't make any difference. You, you believe it anyhow, just to pray. Is that right? You'd believe me anyhow if I prayed for you. But I believe you held up your hand a while ago that we were strangers to one another. But God knows us both. You believe that. If the Holy Spirit will tell me uh, what's your trouble or something, there might be strangers here. Let's just find out if there is or not. See? Is there any strangers here that's never been in one of my meetings before? Let's see your hands. Put them up. Well, my. Sure there is. Then I'll explain this just a moment later. Here's a picture of St. John 4. Just so you'll see. Jesus, being a man, the God-man, God was in him, he met a woman at the well. St. John 4. And they, she was a Samaritan, and him being a Jew, he asked her for a drink of water. And she said, the, it's not customary for you Jews to ask Samaritans such. And the conversation went on. And Jesus, the Bible said that he had a need to go by Samaria. The Father sent him up there because how many knows that Jesus said, I do nothing until the Father shows me first. Jesus never did one thing until he saw a vision on what to do. No prophet or anything else. Until God showed him, it ain't man, it's God. Never man, it's God. So he spoke to the woman till he found out what her troubles was. And when he found her trouble, he told her her trouble. How many of you strange people, has there ever been one of the meetings before, knows what the woman's trouble was? Raise up your hand. Sure. She had, she was living in adultery. She had uh, married five husbands and she wasn't living with the sixth husband. She's with them, wasn't her. But Jesus found where her trouble was and told her. And what did she say? Why, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. We know that when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. See, that was the sign of the Messiah. 
See, you must be a prophet. And we know when Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things because how many knows that the Messiah was a prophet? Moses said so. The Lord your God shall rise up a prophet like unto me. Is that right? Whosoever did not hear this prophet will be cut off amongst the people. So they know he is to be the God prophet. And he said that, that we know Messiah cometh, and when he comes, he'll tell us such things. But who are you? And he said, I'm here to speak to you. And she ran into the city and said, Come see a man that told me the things that I've done isn't this the Messiah. Now that same Jesus, when he went away, said, A little while the world will see me no more. Yet you shall see me, for I'll be with you even in you to the end of the world. And the things that I do shall you do also. He prophesied that this thing would take place as he draws near. His spirit is getting, the last 40 years has been moving into the church. Giving him the baptism, restoring the gifts of tongues and everything. Now what did Paul say? If one comes in among you and y'all speaking with tongues and the unlearned be set there, you will say, why, well, you're, you're barbarians. But if one prophesies and reveals the secret of the heart, then they'll fall down and say, God surely is with you. Is that right? So you see, we're just getting near home now. The Messiah is being made known brighter, 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 just like your shadow of coming, and it gets more and more and more until it becomes completely positive. That's when Christ and his bride unites together. Then we'll be one in him. Sister, not knowing you, never seeing you in my life, I have to wholly depend on something to reveal it to me. What would be your trouble? I've never seen you. This is our first time meeting. And but God knows. Now, you be the judge. Now, if I'd run up, lay hands on him and say, Oh, you're sick. I don't know you're sick. But I'd say, You are sick. My guess it. And say, The Lord's going to heal you because I laid hands on you. That's true. That's right. He promised that. But now, what if he goes back down in your life and tells you something? You know whether that's the truth or not. Something's already happened. And if he knows what has been and will tell you what will be, then surely you'd have faith in that, wouldn't you? You'd believe that. Or would you? Would you believe it? Oh, I didn't say that you had committed adultery. I said if God told you something that's wrong with you, what you're here to be prayed for, something like that. You know, I don't know what's wrong with you, but God does know what's wrong with you. How many of the audience understand? How many of the prayer line understands? All right. So if the lady doesn't understand this right, I shall leave the woman and go to the audience. So that you'll see. Let the woman understand. Every person's out there that's sick, has something wrong with them, raise up your hands. You don't have a prayer card. Here. See this lady sitting right here with a little round hat on? Hand up to her mouth. Yes. She's suffering with heart trouble. If that's right, stand up on your feet, lady. Go home. Jesus Christ makes you well. I don't know her. I've never seen her in my life. Are we strangers, lady, to one another? We don't know each other. Not at all. You're sitting there without a prayer card or anything. You're sitting in the audience. Is that right? Now you feel different, don't you? The heart's beating normal again. Why? What did you touch? You touched the high priest and chair. I see what I mean. You just have faith. Believe. Now you understand what I mean? You don't see somebody else you think that was just a makeup? Someone else in the audience believe. Here, this lady's sitting here with her hand up, a little round cap on sitting there. She also has heart trouble and she's praying for it. That's right. That's right. If it is, stand up on your feet. You. All right? Your heart feels better now, don't it? All right, you're healed. You can go home. That you might think it just to deal with heart trouble. The woman sitting right behind her there suffering with high blood pressure. Is that right, lady? Stand on your feet. That's right. You don't believe it just feels a high blood pressure. The lady sitting behind her is anemic. Is that right, lady? Stand on your feet. Go home and be healed. Amen. Jesus Christ is God. See? Now, look this way. The lady just doesn't understand, but look, let me show you. Watch this way. You're nervous. You've got a nervous condition. You're also suffering with a cancer. That cancer is of the bone. That's right. You're not from this place. You're not from this city. You're not from this state. You're from Kentucky or Tennessee. You're right on the line of Kentucky and Tennessee. Your name is Miss Phillips. Does that satisfy you? Go home now and get well over it in the name of Jesus Christ. (laughs) 
Lord our God, creator of heavens and earth, be merciful to my sister and heal her in Jesus' name. I don't say one word, you believe you're healed anyhow? All right, God bless you, I'll go. You believe, sister? O oh Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, thy spirit all sufficient and present now, let thy love come on her and heal her in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. If I don't say one word to you yet, you believe you'll be healed? Well, your nervousness has left you. You'll heal just and you go on. <laughs> you just have faith. Believe now. I, if I don't tell those people, that doesn't make any difference. It's just the same. He's the same spirit. You believe it? Yeah. You're right. This lady, are we strangers to one another? Does Jesus Christ, you believe it's his, his presence is standing here now, just taking our bodies? You are a Christian. Of home be well. In the name of Jesus Christ, be well. Oh Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, heal this woman of heart trouble in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, sister. Go believe. Come, sister. You believe with all your heart? All right, the female trouble will leave you and you go home be well now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You believe for the little lad? Lord, I lay hands upon him in the name of Jesus Christ. Let him be well. Amen. God bless our brother and I lay hands upon him in the name of Jesus Christ. May he be healed. Amen. Now, sister, we all see that you're crippled. You got all stoved up. You believe that God will heal you? Oh, Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, let thy spirit of mercy come upon the woman and heal her in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I go believe it and you throw your crutch away and go home. All right. Do you believe with all your heart? You believe me to be the servant of Christ? If God will reveal to me what you're here for, or your sickness, whatever it is, you believe that God will grant to you the promise? All right. You're here for somebody else. It's your husband. He just went to the hospital. He's got something wrong with his lungs and his bones. That's right. Go. He'll get well. Believe it with all your heart. Oh, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may this child be healed for the glory of God. Amen. Don't doubt. Believe it. Oh, Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, grant this woman's healing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Believe, sister. Lord, creator of heavens and earth, grant the healing of this woman in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We see the little girl here at the polio. They just sit her right down here. Let me pray for her right there, right there. Just believe now that God's going to let this little girl get well. You going to believe it? And bring it right here. Now, this little girl here, no discernment for this. She's got polio. She's in braces. Let's believe that God will heal this child. Your heavenly Father, the creator of heaven and earth, the author of everlasting life, send thy blessings upon the child, and may she be healed for the glory of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask it. Amen. Down. Believe that she'll get well and have what you have. Watch you stay down there by a little bit. Go down there just a little bit and stay in the presence here, folks. See what happens to her. All right. Well, while I was praying, the hard trouble left you, so just walk in and restore it. Lord God. Oh, Lord, I pray that you'll grant it to him in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Oh, Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, give blessings to my brother. This is what he's asking for in Jesus' name. Amen. Come, my brother. We see that you're shaking with palsy, but you believe that God will heal you? Lord God, I pray that you will my brother and make him well in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, everybody just be in prayer, prayerfully waiting, watching. You believe now that the Lord Jesus will make him well, sister? O oh, eternal God, author of everlasting life, giver of every good gift, send thy mercies upon our sister and heal her in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe with all your heart. Look, young... Oh, I'm sorry. Come here, sister. What's the matter? You, you, you're all nervous. Mental nervousness. Just feel like you can't get to yourself. You want to place, this, place your foot. This is it right now at the cross. I go, I can make it leave you. <laughs> but it'll come back if, if, of course, in this presence now, he couldn't stay here if he had you. But it'll come back if, if the good man in the house, faith isn't there. You've wanted a place to start, and I'll start from right here. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, this shadow of darkness like a mist hanging at the woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, demon of nervousness, leave the woman. Amen. I go and rejoice. Look, be happy. Just rejoice and thank God. He'll stay away from us. Just believe it. All right, come, sister. 
You're going to have to be operated on if God doesn't heal you. But God will take the tumor out if you believe him. Will you believe him? In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be healed. Amen. Believe with all your heart. Now you'll be crippled with arthritis if you don't, God don't heal you. Lord Jesus, healer of arthritis, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come, sister. Arthritis will get you too if you don't believe it. Lord, I pray that you'll take the palsy from her and heal her the arthritis and make her well in Jesus' name. Amen. I go believe you. If you can believe. All you believing out there now? Everybody praying for these people? How do you do? Something taking place in the audience just then. I can't see it right now. Maybe he'll reveal it. Just keep in prayer. We are strangers to one another, I suppose. This first time meeting. But the Lord God knows us both. Yes. You believe that he could tell me what your trouble was? Sure, I do. You got heart trouble. Yes. You're ready for the hospital to have an operation. Yes. That is true. You believe me now? Yes, I do. You're not from this town either. No, I'm not. not even from this state. You're no. from Missouri. That's right. Waynesville. That's right. Mm -hmm. Your name's Elsie. That's right. Your last name's Martin. That's right. Now go home and be well. well. In Jesus' name, amen. Have faith. All right, sister. If you believe your back trouble is going to this left you, so you might. Oh, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal our sister and make her well. Amen. Lord, I pray that you'll heal our sister here and make her well. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just have faith, just, just believe. That's all you have to do. When the blessings are falling like that, then just reach right out and get a hold of it. You see, it's God with his big loaded powers of God just sprinkling out over you like that. Gifts for you. He just throws them to you. Like uh, Ella Egypt did to Rebecca. Just throwing out his gifts of mercy and blessings to you. Do you believe that? Just have faith and believe. Looks like the discernment is set for the fire. And then, see, you can't have all discernment. If you do, you don't get them all through. Don't you like this way, brother? Why, sure. Gives everybody a chance to be prayed for. Now, every one of it would be the same. If we, it'd be just the same thing to each one. Look, let's see. Who's the next? This woman? Or this woman here? How do you do? We're strangers to one another, are we? All right. I don't know you and you don't know me. But if God will reveal to me what your trouble is, will you believe me to be his servant? Believe it would have to be the Spirit of God telling me that? You have trouble with your lungs, with your breast, and with your back. Is that right? Now you go back to your basket and be well. Jesus Christ will make you well. Do you believe that God will take a tumor out without an operation? All right. Go and receive it in the name of God. Now, brother, that old asthmatic condition is awful bad, but you believe God's going to make you well? In the name of Jesus Christ, may it be condemned. Under the power of the Holy Ghost and in the presence of Christ, may he be healed. Amen. Amen. O oh Lord, creator of heaven's earth, grant the healing to this brother that he's asking in Jesus' name. Come, sisters. You're awful strong looking to be a, to be a nervous person. But sometimes our, our looks don't, uh, it's deceiving. But God will heal you that, don't you believe it? 
Oh, Lord, I pray that you'll heal our sister and take this nervousness from her in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I go believe you. Just have faith. You believe, my brother? Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, may our brother go and be made completely well. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, brother. All right. Next. Is it? All right. We strangers to one another, sister? This is all the prayer cards now. The girl, the girl here is what we call in the nation here colored. Her home is, she's uh, Ethiopia. Now, Africa. But did we know as a white man, a colored woman, a very picture of the Lord meeting the woman at the well. They were two nationalities of people. One was a Samaritan, one was a Jew. But Jesus let them know right quick that God had no colors or races in his. They all are one we come from Adam, every one of us. All of us are children of God. The country we live in, the colors of our skin, white, brown, yellow, black, whatever it is, we're all one in Christ Jesus. The places we live had nothing to do with God. God put us that way. Certainly. They had a great segregation in them days, like they trying to have in the South, but God let them know, Jesus let them know that he was God of all. And that's right. Now here's exactly that picture again. Two different people. A man, a woman, one of one race, one of the white race, one of the dark race, standing here. I've never seen the woman, and I suppose we're strangers to each other. Is that right? If that's right, raise, raise your hand so the people can see. I don't know her, never seen her in my life, maybe the first time she's ever seen me. But now, there's something wrong, maybe, maybe there's not. I don't know. But if the Holy Spirit will reveal and tell me what's wrong with you or some secret that you, it's in your heart, just reveal it out. And reveal it, then you'll know it was something that did it. Will you believe it was a would you be like that woman of Samaria when the Lord Jesus did that to her? She ran into the city and said, Come see a man who told me the things that I did or it's what's in my heart. Isn't that the Messiah? Well, it's the same Messiah in his church, isn't it? You believe that? All of you will believe it? May the Lord grant it. Now step up close so if the vision does break, the people can hear it and strain it. Now here we both are, never met in our lives before. Here's the Bible, our first time. Now, if Jesus Christ is still the Messiah, if he's raised from the dead, then he's not dead. He's alive forevermore. He's with the church. And if he is with the church, he promised to work through the church the same way that God worked through him, the body of Jesus, that God would work through the church by the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Is that right? The same words. Now, let it be known that Jesus Christ is alive. This is by a gift that comes from God. Now, the lady I've never seen. May the Lord God tell me something that would cause the audience to receive Jesus right now as your as their healer. And if you need it, may He grant the same thing to you. Now, you look like a healthy woman, strong, young. But sometimes it'd have to be something that I couldn't see. It had to be something that had to be revealed spiritually. But you are suffering, and the suffering is from a tumor. You believe God can tell me where that tumor is at? It's in your right side. That's right, isn't it? Now, do you believe the same Messiah? You believe it out there? Yeah. See, Brother Bram, you might have guessed that. She's got a fine spirit. Yes, I see a thing in her heart. It's a desire. Isn't he wonderful? You know I caught that right then, didn't you? It's for somebody else. It's a friend of yours in the hospital with a stroke. That's right, isn't it? If God will tell me who you are, will that, may, will that settle it for you? The same God that said to Peter, Your name is Simon, your father's name is Jonas. I <laughs> struck him. But your first name is Maddie. Your last name is Jones. The same God. Go and be well, sister, in the name of Jesus Christ. You believe the Lord Jesus? 
then all that believing, stand on your feet and receive your healing. Raise up your hands. Now look to the God of heaven while we pray. O oh Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, who is present now to heal the sick and the afflicted, send thy power and thy blessings upon this audience. I condemn every disease and every sickness. May it leave the people. Come out, Satan, in Jesus' name. May the people be healed for God's glory. Now raise your hands, give him praise, and thank him for your healing, and each one of you will be well. Amen. 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 Let's all stand and lift our hands and worship God.